So if you're a regular listener of the podcast, I'm sure you've noticed that we've been doing a lot of content centered around the rise of Skywalker. Um, we've had good things to say. We've had bad things to say. We've had a lot to say, um, which is why there's so many episodes. And honestly, I was kind of losing my steam on Star Wars for a bit. But then this Colin Trevorrow Duel of the Fates script finds finds its way onto the internet and my 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 excitement for Star Wars has been you restored. Get hit by a freight train. I got like Old I got hit Steve. by a freight train. It's it's like I got hit by the Millennium Falcon, dude. <laughs> it's fantastic. Um, it's fantastic. Script. It, it's it's um it, it it's just it's it's reinvigorated me and I'm really really excited tonight to talk about this script and to talk about like what it means and and you know sadly I don't think we'll ever see this thing get made. Um, maybe there's an ambitious am animation student out there somewhere that wants to take oh. this on. That would be so cool. And we would all download it and we would support your Kickstarter <laughs> and we'd be your best friend. Um, but yeah, it just, I feel good again. And I want to feel good right now because Clone Wars is coming out too. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, so, you know, stick with us. We're going to break down the script. We hope you enjoy it. Um, and, and just to show you how, like amazing the script is we barely got uh, out of the first act of not not the first we're not sequence even through the first act we're not we're not done the first <laughs> sequence of this yeah for part one it's really exciting yeah part. it's really good yeah cool so yeah cue the music meanwhile back on the podcast four colossal nerds named Saba, chris Christina and Frank have set out to take on a great darkness that has enveloped the world of fandom with their powers of common sense and the strength to take on even the most but her Twitter mobs and insufferable comment section trolls. They fight for truth, objectivity, and nuance in the conversation and debate over fictional made-up shit. Welcome back to another episode of Meanwhile, back on the podcast. I'm Frank McGuire. I'm Christina Dudema. I'm Chris Ibana. And I'm Matt Fowler. Guys, we got a great show lined up for you today. I know I say that when we start every episode and it's kind of, it's kind of becoming quite repetitive. He was but... lying about the other times. <laughs> this is the one time he means it. <laughs> this is definitely the one time I mean it. Because we're talking about, you, you may have heard of this, you may have not. Um, we're talking about the Colin Trevorrow Duel of the Fates Star Wars Episode Nine script that's been leaked online. We're going to get into the script. We're going to talk about the concept art. We're gonna we're gonna basically break this entire thing down for you guys. Um, before we jump into that, how's everybody doing? Pretty good. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. I, I had a good day. Uh, like breaking this uh the script. I, I didn't even look at it until today. Yeah. And and I had a great day because of it. It was, it was so much fun. It, it was fun. Yeah. Like fun. just kind of dipping into it and yeah. like it 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 really made me. It really put me in a good place with Star Wars again. It really, really did. Yeah. Like, like I've always been into like what ifs. I, this isn't the, it's strictly the same thing as a what if. Yeah. But like imagining like you know like different trajectories to things is always really. Fun yeah. It showed yeah. someone tried. I feel like Abrams yeah. didn't really try for the last mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. Like he didn't put his like voice on it and was like studio. This is what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah, Abrams, I felt like Abrams really wanted to do a lot of fan service, and this one felt more like its own story rather yeah. than like it uh, continues Ryan yeah. Johnson's yeah. like it vision. Does. It yeah. does. It's it, so... you know what I thought actually is when uh, that Ryan John or uh, uh, JJ Abrams read this script and then wrote and then wrote his script and then used the justifications and then forgot that this was this script wasn't being filmed because a lot of the justifications on this script justified a lot of the stupid shit that he did. Yep. Right, and it's like. Got it's not the same movie, dude. Like you gotta put you gotta put all that stuff in. Here. Yeah, exactly. If it did, it just feel like he lifted a lot of things, but didn't build uh the plot points yeah. to those things. So. Well, interesting that you guys mentioned that it feels like Abrams lifted some things out of the script because Colin Trevorrow did get a story by credit, right, 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 and he did get uh, acknowledgement from the Writers Guild yeah. for 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 his participation in in this movie or in in um the Rise of Skywalker. Um, he's donating all proceeds to uh, charity, apparently. So that's pretty awesome. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, there's definitely Trevorrow's DNA in this. Um, hopefully to the to the Australian and... relief. To the what? Oh yeah, hopefully. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's hope that 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 is the case, or the get Donald Trump out of office campaign. 
Um, uh, disclaimer, it, guys. This is this is going to be a two parter because this is a yeah. huge undertaking. This is going to be big, and guys. we wanted to do it justice. Yeah, so. we really want to do it justice because yeah. there's so many. Stay tuned for part like two. even the most minute plot points have so many connective like strings and 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 um and uh, strands yeah. to other things. Yeah. Um, and it really felt like two Star Wars fans wrote this movie. Like mm-hmm. that's that's. That was the immediate feeling I got. Mm-hmm. Like two people who love Star Wars just as much as we did mm-hmm. wrote this movie. That's, I don't know. Yeah. And I really love Same. that it builds on the other two movies in the trilogy. Yeah. So yeah. There's lots not, of callbacks. It doesn't feel yeah. like a battle. It feels yeah. like he kind of just took what was handed off to him yeah. and went from there and yeah. built a story. Yeah. It was like there, natural so. growth. Yeah. Yes. The end of the movie. Yes. It was evolution. Yeah. Like yeah. it was the exactly. involvement. It, it was the evolution of a story. The evo- exactly what it yeah. was. Like. The force has to evolve. Yeah. And that's, we're at a point where we're still yep. the two archetypes against yep. each other. Mm-hmm. And like Johnson was just like, let's get rid of that. And yep. this is the script that wanted to do it. Yeah. 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 I, so, I agree with that. So guys, before you, went, or during uh, when you were listening to this episode, uh, make sure you go to our Instagram to see the concept art and yep. to see, and to see the actual, so you know, like, so you can follow along with what we're talking about. Uh, we'll, we'll link the script and we'll, we'll, I mean, just walk, just look at the concept art by itself. That's beautiful. It's already beautiful. It is so beautiful. Yeah. What did you guys dude. think of the co- the concept art? Oh my god the 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 one the one shot with um with Ray with the double bladed yeah. lightsaber on the yeah. bridge I of the Star Destroyer. That was gonna happen. Like yeah. I thought, once you break Anakin's <laughs> lightsaber, finally, after yeah. everyone in Star Wars has used it, <laughs> yeah. Let's get something new. Let's yeah. get a Jedi or like. The good side of the, the light side of the force have yeah. a double side because so, yeah. they was, use yeah, it sorry. in Clone Wars. We've only seen it with the dark side, yeah. right? No, uh, well, I guess he was bad, uh, General. Oh, General, uh, yeah, the 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 uh, front, the uh, Quill, Krell, Krell, Krell. General Krell. Yeah, he, yes. he was dope. Well, he had the folding ones. Yeah, like, he had the folding like Ray ones. Ray does in yeah. the vision. He's got two yeah. of them. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, also, like I guess, uh, old, uh, Knights of the Old Republic used to, used to do. It. If you guys, yeah. if you guys remember, like earlier, early in, on this podcast, that's the one thing I really wanted in this. In this in this episode is a is a staff lightsaber. Ever since I saw Force yeah. Awakens, that's how she fights with the lightsaber. She fights like with the it's lightsaber. a bow staff. We, we yeah. have the staff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's really, which, really, which would really be cool. Awesome. That yeah. would make for some and, really cool fight scenes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and like her outfit was very like Luke Skywalker mm-hmm. return, yeah. right? Like it, it had the the flap and everything. Although very homage. Although yeah, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't have liked it if it was exactly that because that's exactly his outfit, right? He had the he had the like the overcall the, the huge collar on one side. Yeah. So like I don't. Oh, sorry, the lapel on one side, but... It yeah. would kind of make nice, sense though. if it was his armor or something. Like, if he buried oh, yeah, it like she, like, tailored then, yeah. it or found it. Yeah, yeah. and then tells yeah. her where it yeah. is. Because he does train her in this mm-hmm. script, but we're not... We'll, well, she, we'll get to yeah, that. Yeah, we will get to that. Yeah. So, before we dive into the to the granular stuff, let's go around the room. Chris, mm-hmm. for you first, buddy. Um, what were What were three things that stood out to you that you really loved about this story? Ooh, three things, man. Why you gotta do me like that? Um, ah, no, man. You can't give me three things. Uh, that, that's gonna kill me. Um, <laughs> but I, what I will say, no, no, it's not. It's not. There's a, a lot I loved about oh, okay. it. Okay, it, it was like, okay. So my, I guess my number one is like Kylo Ren's, like Kylo Ren's whole thing, because I really agreed with with Christina's point where Kylo Ren could have been the big baddie. And oh, of course you, you he could. Still, he killed you, Snoke, dude. Yeah. Like that in the most me, coolest way. Yes, yes. To me, that is literally the door being kicked open to say, "Fuck you! I'm the big bad of this franchise. Yeah. Suck his my dad. dick." Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And also, I was like dad. hoping they would Fuck. carry on the choreograph, like lightsaber fights that they used in the last yeah. Jedi, because that was one of the coolest so lightsaber dope. and most original lightsaber so fights dope. ever. No flipping. Just straight up passing oh, lightsabers and gush. Wait, are we talking about the the throne room scene? Yeah. yeah. Okay, like, we need to talk about that. I'm not a big fan <laughs> of that fight scene. But I but like it. like you you could have made him the big bad, and if you really wanted to do a redemption arc, you could have still done it, right? Yeah. Like there's like there, there's a thing with Star Wars where everybody was like everybody. A lot of people are saying like like is he redeemable? But the entire point of of, of Darth Vader is no matter how evil you are, you, there is still a ray that you. Uh, and not Ray, not Ray Ray. Like actually like a ray of, of goodness in you that, that you could be redeemed, even if it costs you your life, right? Like, right. Like like you could say if he was so evil he can't be redeemed, like that evil will like it'll cost him his life to be redeemed because mm-hmm. that's the cost of you being that evil. But so like I think you could have you could have done a redemption arc if you wanted to. I'm okay if they don't. Mm-hmm. But he could have been the big bad. And I think this script 
was better for his character and and um and i guess i'll, I'll just cheat and say num- my number two is is i really love how in this script the f- the evil the dark side corruption got to him yeah and i love that about in in, in other star yes. wars works where the dark side corruption like like when darth vader was like all messed up like when they didn't give us an explanation we all assumed as kids that it was because it was dark side that like he he had to meld it with machines because he do- he's done so much evil i love that like like dark side corruption could just be a coincidence like something could have happened mm-hmm. because you're evil and like it corrupts you like anakin did that and in this script he got fucked up right with the the Sith holocron the holocron yeah and it's like i love the visual like nod to to no, it's not a visual nod like a, a visual like parallel to his di- uh, dissension into dark side yeah okay uh, i'll just i'll just stop there because i'll tell you my top 10 during the, the, <laughs> this whole thing okay christina what what uh what stood out for you so I really love the opening sequence to this. Oh my god! Yes. Yes. Right? Yes. I, I really love that we, you know, we end kind of the last movie with Rose, and like yes. we start this movie with Rose. It makes sense. It yes. ties in nicely. She's feeling all and- ballsy because she kissed Finn, and <laughs> she was part of the, um, you know, part of this mission, like at the end of the Last Jedi. And yeah, she goes into this and, with like and just in this brimming one, with she's confidence. She's like Tomb Raider or something. Yeah, she's dude. like epic. So Straight we see, up. We see her grow and become yeah. like kind of cool. We see her go from yeah. this like really chirpy, like peppy person to someone who's maybe like a little bit more, a little bit more skilled grizzled. at fighting. Yeah. A little, yeah, a little bit more grizzled from war. Yeah. It's been a few years. Yeah. She's been out in the field. Um, and she's going on this like epic spy mission. They teach her to be some kind of spy. Yeah. And they're they're trying to break into what uh, Star. They're trying to steal a star destroyer. A star destroyer. Yeah. 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 To, to get some yeah, uh, power to fight back. So yeah. I love this whole premise. Yeah. No. Um, I I I really love this sequence, and I'll tell you why. Because not only did it echo back to like literally the best Marvel movies that I can remember: Age of Ultron, Civil War, you know, Winter Soldier, where they literally just drop you into the action and something crazy is going on, mm-hmm. and there's something afoot, and it's and it's and it's high stakes. Um. But it also kind of echoed back to a lot of George Lucas and, and Steven Spielberg stuff. Well, for me, yeah. which echoes, I love. It's Colin Trevorrow, right? So he yeah. did Jurassic World. So yeah. it, it's an action adventure movie. So yeah. to me, that, have, that has echoes. I feel that like kind of Jurassic World vibe. kind of helped him lose this job because it did so bad. And yeah. that's why, like, Disney which didn't have shame, faith yeah. in Maybe. him. Well, they're blaming it's too it. It did badly. I enjoyed that movie. I thought it was really fun. They blamed it on the book of Henry. That's what happened. Like a lot. Well, that's the insider. Like the the rumors. Oh, really? Is that they blamed it on the book of Henry? Um, because apparently that movie didn't do all that great. Um, but I'm sorry, Kathleen Kennedy, you fucked up, yeah, dude. He, I think she, she I did. Think it was honestly. I thought it was because we tragically lost. Um, Carrie Fisher. I think that's a part agree, of it. She's I huge I, in this she's script. Huge I feel in like script. you could have. Yeah, she is. I feel yeah, like you he really, you he really wrote, it. wrote her into the script, and they were probably like, "Dude, you got to change it. Like, there's no way this is gonna work." Yeah. And he probably like refused to change yeah, it. Yeah. Like, well, like what screams yeah, creative? Something. Something. What, what screams? Something. What screams creative difference more than that? Exactly. Right? Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So they were like, rewrite your whole script, and he's like, probably no. attached to it. He probably didn't want to rewrite his own script. Sure, but but okay, but. All right, let's. Okay, but wait. I, I okay, wasn't yeah, done. go ahead. Go so ahead. So the other sorry. thing that stood out, I loved. Uh, I How do Rose love of that. You. Uh, sorry, I do love that <laughs> Kylo uh, becomes really bad in this, mm. and and like he really does have to be worse than Vader. It's yeah. the last movie mm-hmm. yeah. of yeah. nine he movies. Like, he should have been. He has to be really he fucking evil. Him. Yeah. So we see him like running concentration camps for population control. That's yeah, that's super hardcore. Fucked, super fucked up. Well, that's and, mostly... and he killed his dad. He killed his dad. Someone who killed yeah. his dad has to do something really fucked up. Yeah, like... I agree. I because Vader I was agree. still kind of soft on the end. Like he he never really was like no, he wasn't he, that he, bad. He didn't. Go he only there. killed younglings. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> that's it. That's all. <laughs> okay. He didn't kill that's his it. family at the end of the day. No, so no. Um, yeah, those were like well, Try, didn't he? To... Tried, didn't he <laughs> tried to Padme die oh, of well, a broken heart yeah, yeah. God, a broken heart. no more we, we also see we also see uh the knights of ren actually having a role in this movie yes and yeah, they have, oh, like, yeah. that they yes, have jedi that, powers are force sensitive yes, they, so well, they, they always yeah, were and like they yes, emphasis they this been. in the new comic too as yeah. well yeah they fucked up dude and then there's force sensitive good guys so i kind of like that like yeah. bringing these people who like mm. 
don't really know what they're doing and kind of like forming a team maybe out of them or something like that. That yeah. would have been cool mm. to see. So, you're talking yeah. about you're talking about the woman that Ray goes to see. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cause it sounded yeah. like it sounded like there was some kind of training ground for like poor sensitive the, the, people. Yeah, that's at the end. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's what Ray kind of established. But then that, they could have yeah. built they could build more movies off of that. So like it yeah. would have been cool if they yeah, if no. they went that way. There's lots then, of through lines from this script for sure. Yeah. For sure. Matt, what's there for you, pal? Ooh, I would have to say number one is Luke haunting mm. Kylo instead good. of because yep. okay, every like every Force ghost either yep. teaches or guides. Yeah. This is just a straight up like yep. that was awesome. <laughs> So good. I will <laughs> so end you. Or so like... good. And 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 you know, it echoes back to the last Jedi when he's like, you know, see you, you know, see you around, kid. You know, like it, it 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 literally carries that line all the way through, you know? And I know a lot of I know a lot of other po- podcasts that have reviewed this script have said exactly the same thing. So it's not anything new. It's not a new revelation, but it's the truth. That's awesome. It it carries through that line okay. from the last Jedi, right? Is that he shows up in Kylo's life. And he stays in Kylo's life, trying to put him back on the right path, right? And he's telling him like, "You need to go back to Leia. You need to go back mm-hmm. to Leia, right?" And and he's just he's he's too far gone. He's way too far gone. And and uh, yeah. So beyond that, what else? Uh, second, it looks like in the concept art that Kylo has a new mask. Yeah. And I thought that was a better idea than reforming the one mm. that you broke out yeah. of anger that Ryan didn't Johnson fucked be up on you. Yeah. Vader or or like compared to him yeah um and then finally i really like the plot point where uh the stormtroopers like rally against hux and yeah hux like kills himself yeah i think that's hilarious yes <laughs> but like it's so like new like yeah mm. if you think about it no empire no stormtroopers like there hasn't been a coup yeah, yeah. you yeah. think there would be a coup once in a while yeah yeah yeah, yeah. no that would don't love that, but we'll get to it. Like, like I like the idea of like having a coup. Like, like it's it's pretty good. Like, uh, dramatic irony for. I Hux. feel like it was the only way f- to turn the tide of the dar- like, well, sure. the resistance and yeah. mm-hmm. the first it's order. Just, it just puts into a lot of questions, like the conditioning that stormtroopers go because they they abandon clones and they abandon droids for these stormtroopers because they're they're apparently better. Mm. But if, if they're just like if if Finn wasn't a one off, and we already know that he's not a one off. Right, like, like it puts into question how good are 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 these stormtroopers really? Well, right? they have right. willpower, right? Mm. Like, so, so the question the is the why day. why go with them and not clones then? Yeah. Right, because clones don't. Oh, because right? it's a, it's yeah, a, there's always some yeah. throwaway yeah. line. Yeah. Yeah. DNA, like, <laughs> you can only use so much DNA of someone. <laughs> yeah. If you don't have them, you can't use them anymore. That's why they didn't use that batch of clones anymore. Right, right, right. For me, the standout points were um, definitely, definitely the first sequence. Um, this whole like, um, Ray, sorry, Finn and Poe disguising themselves as refugees, breaking into this camp to liberate people to get them back to freedom. Um, the whole Ray disguised as Tuscan um, a Tuscan Raider of all yeah, things. That was great. Fuck, dude, that was so dope. And then obviously stealing the Star Destroyer. This should have happened ages ago in a Star Wars movie. Somebody should have stolen the fucking Star Destroyer ages ago because Except as soon as I read that, I was like, fuck yeah, yeah, dude. Like, Isn't it dangerous, though? Like, what if of so, course. so many civilians... Like, they could destroy a planet in the crossfire, so I don't, they don't even know how to control it or turn it off. But that's the best or- part. <laughs> if, 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 like, okay, so, so I... To get prepared for this show, I listened to a podcast where the, the two hosts actually read the script because obviously I'm not part of Hollywood and I have no access to this fucking script mm-hmm. because if I did, it would literally be like framed and like hanging in my room right now. It's probably <laughs> um, on script D or something. I bet we could find it. It probably <laughs> isn't. I wish it was. So one of the elements, so, so, so one of the elements in the opening sequence is, is when they get on the Star Destroyer, um, Ray's on the bridge and they've left like a small armament of like First Order troopers and officers and Ray just mind tricks all of them and basically convinces all of them to fly the ship to whatever system that they want to yeah, go to. Because Poe's like, I can figure out how to fly yeah, anything. I can and fly like, anything. We don't we have, have time. The time for that. <laughs> we don't have the time for that. And that's such a good comedic beat. Like, that's a good comedic beat, right? Yeah, J.J. Abrams' comedic beats were so forced. So yes. It was so... Oh, it was yes. Just, just but awkward. I actually, both awkward of them. cringe. I want to say both both movies were kind of forced. Yeah, too. I yeah. Like the comedy I find, either. Yeah. 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 Well, I like, I like some of the comedy in Last Jedi. Okay. 
I don't know why everybody has such a problem with the um uh uh with the with the general hugs line. I think that thing's Which one? fucking hilarious. Which line? The opening line. Oh when, yeah, I, I like the intro when Poe po. flies in on the X-wing. Oh, because, and he's like, because, I need to speak to General Hugs. No, because that's not uh, Hugs. General oh, Hugs. Oh, Hugs. Yeah, that was a funny line. So good. But dude. the whole like, uh, am I speaking to him? That was a cell phone joke, and it took me out of the movie. I was really? like, Are you doing a goddamn cell phone joke? <laughs> I don't know, like you I have bad it. reception. Like I, don't know, I liked it. Well, well, he, well, he, well, he was trying to buy time, right? Yeah, yeah. So, okay, so let's start. Um, wait, wait, before we start, I, I do want to say yeah. that, like. Like when I was reading the script, I had like, or not reading, like when I when I was like discovering this the script, however way I, I did, um, don't arrest me, Hollywood. Uh, like you, um, I did really enjoy it, but I I just want to say that like, I think the difference is like we're reading the script and the de- the delivery we're doing in our own head. Mm-hmm. So it's really easy to like it, and and a lot of the things in Star Wars, oh, is like, of course, not just in Star Wars, like yeah. in everything. It's like execution. The, the execution is the problem, yeah. right? Like so if if you showed me. The Last Jedi, I would have liked it way more than I saw than what I saw the movie, right? Because the execution was like done wrong in certain places, whatever. So I, I just want to warn everyone that like we do love this script, but like if we if this script was filmed, yeah, I think like a, a lot a lot could have gone wrong in the execution. Oh, of course. So like I will be a little bit extra nitpicky because you know like yeah, I have to amplify that because uh, the, we're filtering this through like a very favorable like light because we're viewing it in our own sure head, sure right? we're directing it rose colored glasses yeah, yeah exactly, <laughs> you know, exactly you know we're directing it in our like 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 in our own head right like yeah. we're designing so it's, our it's shots a, and... the perfect shot all the time yeah. it's like yeah. not not very cringy fight scenes right yeah. so yeah so yeah like just keep lit- that in mind guys yeah. if i'm overly critical this episode <laughs> okay so, so let's, let's start. start with the crawl so the crawl is the iron grip of the first order is spread to the farthest reaches of the galaxy only a few scattered planets remain unoccupied Traitorous acts are punishable de- by death. Determined to suffocate a growing unrest, Supreme Leader Kylo Ren has silenced all communication between neighboring systems. Led by General Leia Organa, the Resistance has planned a secret mission to, mission to prevent their annihilation and forge a path to freedom. I love this. So right there, it fixed one of the biggest mistakes I thought that I really hated from the, from the rest of Skywalker. What was that? Which was this whole... Um, who, where's our army? The people are our army. They're yeah. too scared to fight. Like, let's fix that. They didn't fix it. It just happened. Yeah. Right? Like right there in the opening credits, it tells you why they were too scared to fight. It's because they were disjointed. There were there was a block on all the communication. They needed to fix that. Yeah. Right. Like people are willing to fight, but no one's organizing them because there's there's a radio block. That 100 percent fixed that problem in 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 that's the good. rise of Skywalker. That's good. So I feel like. Like JJ Abrams, like, oh yeah, that's justifiable. They'll be scared one minute and then they won't be scared. And then he forgot to do it. He forgot to do the radio block. <laughs> it was so simple too. Yeah, he it was could so have simple. easily put so that good. into his Because movie. that happens later. It's like well, they, maybe they fix the problem. Right, but the radio then, yeah. block doesn't work with, you know, Palpatine broadcasting across <laughs> the universe. Yeah. That, that's right? exactly the, the reason. They right. needed to do another right. like something else. Like being so, afraid one minute yeah. and not being afraid for the climax because we need you is yeah. not enough. Not, yeah. not acceptable. No, no, I like that point. Yeah. I really do. Um, yeah, I, the one thing that stands out to me for this crawl is that, like, is that the first order has literally reached like super Nazi level. Yeah, like mm-hmm. they're they're killing people now because just for you know population not being control. down with them and population control. And they have concentration camps, and they have fucking like internment and, and all probably, kinds of crazy shit. They're right? probably selective about who they're putting in the. Well, yeah, they're mostly camps, aliens. Let's yeah. face different it. Different right? now, they don't have a big weapon to control people, so they have yeah. to spread their numbers mm-hmm. and actually control right. them and put them in these yeah. places. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, of and just using fear and to try and quell, um, uh, you know, um, trying to quell unrest by blocking, you know, the disenfranchised from talking to the disenfranchised, mm-hmm. right? And that's. Which That's some how, fucking gangster Nazi yeah, shit. Yeah. Like yeah, super it's an gangster actual, Nazi it's like shit. strategy. Yeah. 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 War. It's like North Korea. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, you see that a lot in the real world. In, in 1984. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And in all the fanti- yeah. uh, sci fi books. Yeah. 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 So, I think we all got super horny for this opening scene. <laughs> so, we'll try and break it down as much as we can. Um, it's basically uh, BB 8 and Rose are they're in a, the, the beginning stages of trying to steal a Star Destroyer. Um, BB-8's disguised in graphite paint, so he looks something along closer to the BB-9, which oh, yeah. is like the First Order unit. Apparently, the BB, the BB unit for the First Order. Um, and then there's some really cool scene. Again, we're 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 talking about a script that's been written. We haven't read it ourselves, 
So we're trying to take all the information and try and timeline it as best as we can. The plot point. So it may be, yeah, yeah, so it may be kind of out of order a bit, but apparently BB-8 jettis himself, jet and jettisons himself onto, from another ship onto the Star Destroyer. So, awesome. so we see him floating through space, apparently, oh, like to get to the Star Destroyer, which is really fucking cool. Um, and again, it like it like it definitely echoes with Indiana Jones or a Marvel movie where you literally just get dumped into the action right away and the stakes are high and, you know, you know, uh, tensions are high and it's just go, 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 go. And I really, really like that. But they also had a plan. They, they- yeah. 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 It was definitely a plan. You can tell that it was that it was well thought out and it was because there's there's not only BB-8 and Rose, not, there's not only BB-8 and Rose, but there's Poe and Finn and they're down on the ground trying to work within the um within the insurgent camps and in the concentration camps trying to liberate them in some sort of uh coordinated um effort and to me it sounded like it was general leia's plan too yeah yeah yeah, that's that's definitely what i was taking away from that too um so during so during this scene when finn and poe are they're they're they've concealed because they've 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 kind of concealed themselves they disguise themselves but they're fully armed during this entire sequence apparently there's like this 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 mysterious Tuscan figure, Raider. Tuscan Raider figure, kind of following them around, like almost like at a couple people, le- like you know, length of a couple people away the entire time. And then Finn and Poe are trying to infiltrate some sort of armored gate or um, some sort of um, entry point. And Rose and BB-8 are the ones that need to turn off the power so they can get in. And then there's an alien apparently that like clips something and sets off an alarm and this alien gets killed in front of um Finn and Poe and then the 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 troopers kind of descend on Finn and Poe and then boom this Tuscan Raider comes in and just obliterates like 15 stormtroopers with like a double bladed lightsaber a staff lightsaber mm. and the 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 garb the Tuscan garb is dropped and it's ray and she's in like this full black outfit very much like mm. you were saying kind of an echo of return of the Jedi, yeah. um, you know, to, you know, to the way that Luke was kind of outfitted. Um, can I take this next part? Yeah, go ahead, so, bro. So this should have been in my top three. Cause I think this is like one of my favorite, um, I guess scenes or like, or like themes of this movie. Um, so I, I 100% agree with like everybody. I think everybody in this room's kind of take on how the Jedi should die. Like I 100% agree. Like by the end of this movie, it should be some new thing. Mm-hmm. However, in this scene, when all the civilians are like, Jedi, yes, Jedi, me Je- too. I love that me so too. much. Me too. Because, l- like, my my biggest thing is, like, yes, like, the Jedi should have been pointed out for, for the, the corrupt bureaucracy that they were. Yeah. But, like, they're, they're, like, let's not forget, like, their, their core tenants are the saviors of the galaxy. Yeah. And it's like, that should never be forgotten. That should yeah. never, that should never be, like, I agree. like, thrown to, to the wind, right? Like, I agree. Like, that should, that there should have been something, like, I'm down with the Jedi going down, yeah. but they should never be irredeemable because as a, as an order, yeah. they went, uh, they, they went the wrong, like, they went too far. They went the wrong way. Yeah. But their core tenants were, like, like, were, like, should be preserved for, for what it actually was. Yep. Yeah. Right and like and towards and and I love that it was it, it was in the beginning of this because towards the end like the idea of the Jedi gets deteriorated to the modern interpretation of it but through through Ray right right but in like and I love that like respect for the Jedi in the beginning. Um, I was just gonna say I think it also makes sense that uh it, you should liberate people who are kind of like gonna have a reason to want to fight. Yeah. So they're trying to build their army. It makes sense yeah. to kind of like rescue all these people who might join their cause. So. It does. It does, but I but I definitely don't think that was their prime motivation. I, I think that I they don't were think yeah. so, but I think it, yeah. it could help to move the story forward. Yeah. But so. but going back to what Chris was saying, like like this scene really kind of hit me in the gut because this is what I've been wanting for like so long. It's just something that kind of calls back to what the Jedi were, mm-hmm. like the legend mm-hmm. of them. Just just the mythos and the mythology and and the fact that they symbolize uh, y- you know freedom and and um and uh and and and, and just all good <laughs> peace, and justice yeah. and all yeah, these peace, great yeah, things exactly. right and peace yeah. and and you know to provide to provide people who are hopeless with hope again mm-hmm. right and this is what that scene did for me like and, and it wouldn't instantly. take away at the but uh, like the Kind of like the deterioration of the Jedi towards the, like the idea of the Jedi towards no. the end. It wouldn't take it away because no. this is a civilian who sees them as the idealic right. form that they right. used to be, right? right? So 
they see the yeah. icon of the lightsaber exactly, and yeah. they just immediately call back to yeah. stories of, you know, Jedi liberating people and mm -hmm. Jedi saving people and Jedi protecting people, yeah. right? But by the way, a lot of people were saying that like this whole Tuscan Raider outfit was was akin to like Lando pulling down his, his, yeah, his yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't think so. I think it's more akin to Leia being in the in the and, bounty and, hunter outfit, right. Yeah. right? Because he she did way more in the booth. Like, in, in the booth, that's what I thought costume? of. Yeah. yeah, yeah, maybe. Um, I've heard both takes. Um, and and it it definitely has echoes of Return of the Jedi for sure. Mm. Um, and I don't think that's bad. Um, my biggest critique of this script is is that there's a lot of subliminal kind of hints and 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 uh callbacks to a lot of the things that we've already had in star wars and i might say like i'm not necessarily saying that's a bad thing but i am saying that's been something that's been kind of um something that everybody's been kind of going into their back pocket on mm. um and it pops up a lot and it's not necessarily bad but Mm -hmm. you know let's pave a new path dude like right. you know let's well, create some new stuff if right? that's the only thing they did i'd agree with you but i think yeah. they also brought in their like if they did like that pre-constructed pre-constructed like theme or 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 like um like moral quandary whatever if that was the only thing they did i'd, I'd agree with you but yeah. they also brought in their own like their, their own new stuff right? oh no they did for yeah, sure so. but 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 and 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 that's what i'm saying like like I'm I'm just trying to say there's a lot of them mm -hmm, in terms mm -hmm, of mm -hmm. the entire sum of yeah, the film, yeah, yeah. right? There's 100%. a lot of them. I agree with you. Um and I'm not necessarily saying like I'm not necessarily saying they're bad. I'm 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 just saying that it's definitely something where filmmakers are becoming dependent upon it, right? Mm -hmm. What'd you think of this Jedi Jedi scene, Matt? Uh well like like you were saying, like this whole saga has like the feel of like let's recreate the magic of our original. So. Yes. Again, like I like the nod, but it could have been different yeah. in a way. Yeah. So it's the same because, like Ryan Johnson, like that's the the thing that took me out of both Last the Jedi and the Force Awakens. That it's like plot point for point, like um, New Hope and Empire, but he just like Johnson flipped it a bit. And I feel like at the beginning of this, they're kind of going the same way. Like let's recreate another movie that they have already done mm -hmm. but like i understand what you're saying like you want something original and you want fast pace and like right to start off like mm. that but yeah i guess i feel it's too similar again right mm. right okay that's valid yeah all right so so as as people are seeing you know a, a jedi for the first time in probably 30 40 years um the people start to rise up against the first order they start throwing rocks at the stormtroopers they're starting to be emboldened by this appearance, this, this, this new sense of hope, which is great. And it kind of echoes across the entire planet. And there's like this kind of silent uprising kind of starting. It only um, takes a small thing to like start a, a protest. Spark. Yeah. yeah. And once you have like small protests, you could have yeah. rebellion. Yeah. Like from there. Yeah. So. Dude, like, I don't know if, how many of you guys have ever been in a protest setting, but. Oh yeah. It escalates. Uh, yeah. It escalates yeah. quickly. Yeah. Like. I was at the G20. I've, I, you know, I was at Me Occupy too. Toronto. Um, I and was in Toronto during G20. I walked away from the protests instead of towards it. I saw yeah. a car flip. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I saw was some like, I was like, oh shit, there's yeah. like policemen oh, yeah. on horses yeah. and everybody wants to like go run towards the action and like photograph yeah. it or something. I'm like, I do not want to be there. I want to leave. Like, yeah, yeah. No, like, it, it, like seriously, it's like soon as somebody says or successfully either sets a cop car on fire or flips a Crap cop car mentality. it's yeah. just fucking everybody just Mom converges mentality. right yeah. Yeah. just converges on that site so this is very much the same thing where there's this 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 uprising beginning um so we cut to one of the first order command we cut to a first order command center and we're introduced to admiral Va vaughn for the first time um just looks like a typical jack booted <laughs> so, type I, I was watching youtube videos on this because obviously we don't have the script i was just trying right. to find information and, and like they, they had to fill the b-roll with with stuff and they put vince vaughn as, as ah, that's great. i'm like yes that's give me vince great. Vaughn in, please send me Star Wars. oh that would be amazing please actually. send me please send me a link of that oh my yeah, that'd god be hilarious. sorry i was away from the mic please send me a link of that dude <laughs> yeah. oh it my be god funny because it, yeah it'd be so yeah. funny if like he could do it too day. like yeah. he, vince vaughn will surprise you he's he a pretty good actor off. i think he could pull it off vince vaughn's quick great. like quick talking um, like banter style yeah, so as good. a as a as a first order officer would be great. Yeah. And if he mixed it with that bad guy that he played in in um in um 
in uh, True Detective. Yeah. Holy shit. Oh, he was he was he was so he good was in so True good Detective. Good. So good. So good. He he was the only good thing in that season of True Detective. Do you think Detective. Trevor is friends yeah. with Vince Vaughn? Was this uh No, no, he no. didn't. He, I don't think he <laughs> Oh, he may have named case. this character maybe. like Vaughn maybe. as a working maybe. title. Anyways. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. So he asked one of his subordinates, "What's going on down there?" And then one of the F- one of the officers responds, "It's the last Jedi, sir." So Ray is now known as the Last Jedi, yeah. which is kind of cool. Awesome. Which I is like, kind of cool. I like that a lot. It echoes back. And then Admiral Vaughn, in response to this unrest, is like, "Get me the Knights of Ren." Yeah. And the Knights of Ren have their own ship. It's called the Knife Nine, and Knife apparently Nine. it's in Galaxy's yeah, Edge. Yeah, yeah, that's apparently their ship. It's one that, of the ships there. that Trevor O created, um, and they put a model of it inside the Galaxy's Edge, and it looks fucking dope, mm-hmm. dude. It looks like a really, really cool ship. Um, the night. So, um, now in this version of Star Wars, in this version of Episode Nine, all the Knights of Ren have names. Have names, yeah. yeah. They talk. <laughs> they have. Um, they're, they're not, not just... in a heavy metal band. <laughs> I was gonna say. <laughs> well, they're, they're they are the heavy uh, the, the, art, the, artillery or whatever. There you right? go. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. They're the they're the guys you call in when you. When you want to fuck up some Jedi, <laughs> um, each member of the Knights of Ren really get kind of gets like th- these are kind of notes that I've gotten from some of the people who read the script. Each of the Knights of Ren gets to shine in their own way yeah. throughout the script, mm-hmm. which is really cool because I wanted to learn more about these characters. Mm-hmm. And movies are really tough for character growth, b- but not for villains because you can literally. You can literally show all you need to know about them is is, is, is their like, motivation yeah, and like you he can yeah. kill someone and there's your yeah. backstory right yeah. there right yeah no for sure for sure um and they have like their own little personal moments where they shine which is great so the Knights of Ren show up in the Knife Nine Admiral Vaughn goes to meet them and then this leader of the Knights of Ren his name is Hataska Ren awesome Hataska Ren the other members are Ot Ren Laurel Ren and Jadik Ren I love that name Jadik that sounds dope. Atasca's Ren is the dark saber. Yeah. So if I was sitting in that theater, that's that moment right there is I would have fucking lost my shit to Captain yeah, America exactly. and Mjolnir. Yes. Like I would have gone, what the fuck? Because <laughs> I actually did that in, in Captain America. Or sorry, in Endgame. Yeah, like so I think th- these are I'm not a big fan of these things that are like kind of um that are canon but aren't sort of mandatory. So so The Last Jedi and Force Awakens are definitely mandatory watching. Like, um, like you need to watch it before you watch this one, right? Yeah. The Clone Wars isn't that. So, like, uh, I've I've never been a big fan of things that like that exist in the world that are big shock to the audience that appear, but there's a justification for it on this like obscure piece of work. Um, this, however, isn't. I don't think fits in that in that space. But it, there is something later on that. Yeah. That I I feel like is that trope, which I think is is problematic for the script. But I think like the dark saber showing up, even if uh, a few fans are like, "What the hell is that?" I thought that was an amazing moment, and I thought that was like perfect for this, for this thing, because it, it it makes you ask like so many questions, right? Like, how the hell did he he get this from? Now we know from the Mandalorian that yeah, but the fall of the Empire. Like, I find the Empire had it right? when they make like shows and stuff. They're like, oh yeah, Star Wars fans are gonna watch that, so we'll spread the lore mm-hmm. and make it like in depth. Right. Whereas, like, when it comes to movies, they're just like, you know what? We're going to have some new people in the audience. We're not going to make them yeah, confused. We're not, exactly. What's this black lightsaber here? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so the, my, my, my thing with that is that, like, that scene was, was meant to make audience ask questions anyway. Yeah. So you, may, you might as well make some of them ask, what is that, right? I think it's pretty cool. I <laughs> would have liked dude, to see that. Listen, dude, they print a visual dictionary for a fucking reason to <laughs> sell it. Oh, right? they held it. They yeah. held it too. It's yeah. like yeah. March now, isn't it? Exactly. So, so I'm sorry, but there's no more excuse not to take risks like this mm. because you put it the visual dictionary and people will find it and they'll figure it out, right? And that's, if honestly, people... I don't know how you guys feel, but that's kind of the fun of the Star Wars world. For oh me. yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like, like I but, really like piecing shit together. You're... I like having a phone and just being like, "Whoop, what that? Oh, yeah. cool." Yeah, yeah, yeah. This also requires less explanation than some of the things that did actually happen. No shit. <laughs> or like right? forced throwaway lines. <laughs> no shit. This is yeah. exactly why I think this is good in here. Yeah. Where oh, I'll just tell you now, I guess, like if I can, like go for it. Is it Mor- Morty? Mortius? The Mortis? M- Mortis? The Planet the, of Mortis? The, the, like, yeah. That I think that that you can't just toss in the movie because it's it's huge oh is it no not the planet not the planet the the 
the thing in Clone Wars where it was like the 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 father and mother and no, the oh, the father yeah. the the daughter and the son of the force that happened on Planet Mortis. That, okay, so yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So like that's not really a planet. That's like that's like a an, a, an extra dimension, right? That shit needed explanation. It's, an it's not something plane. you could yeah. put in this movie, but you could they make did. a movie. They about did that. though. That's oh. that's my problem. Is like this isn't equivalent to the dark saber because this shit needed explanation, yeah. right? Like you you don't just go on Wikipedia. Or, well, first of all, don't, don't do it in movie theaters. It's disrespectful. Like you, this isn't a thing you just look at, right? Like and and then like oh that that's a cool. This is a very yeah, well, important part of the script. People it's, are so, gonna do it in the theater. If yeah. they're not getting any background like, there you go. on what's going on. <laughs> yes, yes, it's a complex decision. Okay, hundred percent, right? But Mortis is the only place where you could tell the story of the balance of the Force. It really is. Yeah, but you you gotta explain it to your audience. Your audience does not know what that. Well, we'll get to it Maybe, when, when we get to it. Yeah, you know I was what? gonna say we're not there yet. You know <laughs> what? We were speculating. You know, we were speculating why Trevor O got dismissed and what the creative differences were. Maybe it wasn't Leia. Maybe it was Mortis. For yeah, all maybe, we know, I guess. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because maybe like okay, so I can tell that um, Trevor O and 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 his counterpart Derek Conley put a lot of time and effort into this, and they really really wanted to carry through certain things which means to me that they're artists um and you can you can pick up on that like just immediately by 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 looking at this work um and yeah i agree like, man. it sounds like they wanted to tell a story yeah. Yeah. they Whereas, wanted to like, tell a story yes i feel like jj abrams was like i got this cool sequence let's put this in yes. here and then let's put light speed yes. skipping and then let's put this and yes. that let's and bring then in random forced, new characters and, and not force give them lightning much yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> yeah. yeah and there's a lot of a lot of respect to like not just like four five six like one two three there's all like, there's all kinds a, a of echoes. tremendous amount of respect there's all kinds of in echoes. this in this yes. script for for the entire universe yes. right? the way yes. this and, is and Clone wars Yes. actually sounds like yeah it's summing up the saga whereas like it's not a forced sum up we're like palpatine now it's summed yeah, yeah. I, I do yeah, feel I like some of those new characters though were forced to be in there i think abrams yeah. was told to put those two new yeah. characters in there yeah like yeah i agree like yeah. i think like J. So J. Abrams, this would have been hard to do that maybe yeah. that was the creative difference like, okay. like if jj well, abrams script could be could be summed up it was damage control that's yep. that's what it was like this yeah this was the thing this was the their titanic that sank yeah. And then now, now the, it was damage control. Like JJ Abrams came in there late, however late it was. Like, like we we just lost Carrie Fisher, very unfortunate. Like, yeah. Like so, it was like just do Rant. do what you can. Like put paste this ship together. You know. Yeah. What I mean? Yeah. No. No. I I definitely and agree like, with must you have been there. Hard, right. I definitely agree with you there. But like, I get the sense that Trevor and Conley cared so much about this story that mm. like. If something is as as consequential as Mortis, like the place where the story becomes becomes resolved, yeah, was like on the chopping block, and Ke Kenny's like, you have to change this. I could totally see fucking Trevor walking away. Yeah, from that. I, I yeah. would take a stance for sure. Yeah. Like, and the thing is, like, it's a shame that he didn't get more time to like set because because I don't. He disagree. spent two years on this fucking. No, no, no. Script I meant too, I meant right? time like screen. Oh no, time. no. But I'm just trying to say that oh, he yeah, spent yeah. two years on the script. Yeah. Sorry, go I, ahead, Chris. Still... Like, wait, hold on. Oh, like, okay. like. like I'm not against Mortis being here because I think it's like very, it's very iconic. Like, not, not iconic, but like it's very important. It's very like salient to like this, the Jedi, like the, the whole like the lore of the Jedi. In general. Yeah. The Force, right? But the thing is like, my argument is that like the, if, if from the script that we got, there was no explanation of what it was. Like, like right. we would ha literally have to watch that episode of, of Clone Wars, which is buried. Like, if, imagine you're not you're not a watcher of Clone Wars. Yeah, it's buried under under this at uh, the yeah. This, I get this that. Series. I can totally see it. Like, I get that. He no. if he found a really good way to explain it to us. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, absolutely. That's that's where the climax I of this get thing that. should happen. Well, that's, yeah, that's what sucks about the Star Wars because it opens on a crawl and then like you go straight into the action or like mm. a scene, mm -hmm. whereas like you could kind of like do a little like this is more to this kind of explanation mm. in the beginning, right? Yeah, you could, but but okay. So go go, Chris. Going back to what you're saying about Mortis, mm. the fact that they're that 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 Ray is still using the Jedi text mm. in this script, I think that that lends um um a lot of solution to that question in terms of like where did Mortis come from? In yeah, the like story yeah. throwaway right? line. You could have yeah. spent yeah, you could have spent some time doing that. Yeah, yeah I, I yeah. would have been fine with like it. her yeah. reading the book to someone. Mm. Yeah, and just kind of discovering something that well, like force especially could, this a force ghost could have told her about totally. it. That would like who, totally. who's been there before Obi Wan? Well, 
Uh, yeah, there wouldn't Obi-Wan. be a good force yeah. ghost of Obi-Wan, but like, yeah. oh no, Anakin. Anakin, but he doesn't he come there? back. He doesn't really come back yeah, as a ghost like he anymore. Yeah, yeah. They, okay. I think he was going to in this script, right? Um, I was I Anakin that. coming back in this one? I don't know if it was this one oh, or I'm not sure. he was slated to come back for, for JJ's Rise. script. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Um, I'm, I'm not yeah. sure what the deal was with that, but um, okay, so let's get on to the next sequence because this one's really cool. <laughs> um, Finn, Ray, Poe, they fight their way to the Star Destroyer that Rose and BB-8 are are kind of hiding undercover on. They board the flood, they, they board, fight their way to the bridge. Poe's like comes in, I think we talked about this already, we kind of started like one of our general points. Um, Poe's like, who's in charge? One of the FO officers is like, I am. And Poe's like, screw you, I can fly anything. And then Ray's, and then Ray's like, we don't have any time for you to try and figure <laughs> out how to fly this thing. And there's Jedi mind tricks the entire ship, <laughs> the entire crew, and they're off. They're taking them to their new, their next destination. Take us to blah blah do blah. Do you think? Do you think the Empire DMV has like the sin number for that Star Destroyer? <laughs> because like, wouldn't that be really easy? Yeah, to wouldn't track? it be like <laughs> yeah, GPS tracked or it. something? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's kind of a Stormtrooper has like find my phone app, and then like, <laughs> and then like Kylo Ren's like. Oh, he's there over there. Oh shit! <laughs> That's kind of an ironic joke on the Last Jedi too, because like, wasn't like, weren't they tracking they're, the rebels? Yeah, they're ships? tracking him through hyperspace. Yeah, they're hyperspace. tracking through hyperspace. <laughs> well, they do so, always get found. It's not like they, yeah, they just buy yeah. themselves a little yeah, time. Yeah, it's yeah. not That's like true. it's not like they're not going to get found. By the way, I haven't seen light speed in one part of this script or even mentioned. Oh, true. Well, of course, it was over mentioned in the last movie, so they're not going <laughs> to <Yeah. laughs> re pick up on it. I guess I guess it was just, No, uh, I think the people summarized it. Cuz again, it Abrams so. threw that like was a throwaway as well, just like uh whatever. Like, yeah, speed yeah, skipping. The You're like yeah. that's how you solve the tracking problem. <laughs> yeah, that was lame. Um so after the resistance, they've escaped. There's a lot of shots of Coruscant in its current state. Yeah. And it's like worn down and decrepit and the first order has like been building over the old city. Yeah. So building whatever their you know, their their bases and, and you know, their concentration camps and all this other kind of crazy shit over the old city. And we meet a new child, but uh, well, sorry, we meet a new character, but he's kind of a throwaway. His his child the child's name is Dade, D A D E. It could be Dottie, I don't know. Um, but he's amongst the immigrants and the refugees, and I think he's there to establish the cost um and the weight of of what the first order's done to the the citizens um, of these planets that they've kind of occupied, I think that's really his only his only. Well, it's not a throwaway that that brings depth to what's to a happening. degree, yeah. but like there's just not enough as far as the details that I have to kind of say beyond anything, right? Yeah. Like I'm like I'm speculating at this point, mm. right? There's but nothing I, to I really think back it makes that sense up. Sense to kind of like run into people, like mm. meet meet residents mm-hmm. of the planets, like show show on, like show a face of the victims. Yeah, yeah. but this yeah. character but like, never Boba really Fett, connects to the rest of yeah, the story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? That's like Boba Fett. He didn't really have a role, and somehow he yeah. became. He like, definitely had a iconic. role. Well, he was chasing down Han Solo. Yeah. He captured. Well, him. I, I think oh. you guys have the same point. Essentially, yeah. is what he's saying. But he was like a minor. I mean, he was kind of a minor. What he's saying, you guys are saying the exact same thing. Like what he's saying is that like. This character is a, is like a throwaway character, not not his his gravity in the scene. Right. His character is just meant to to show gravity to this scene, and and that's what pretty much what you said. Like what he's saying is that like he just doesn't do anything except for that, right? But he's not saying that it's it's insignificant, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so um, then we see we cut to Hux. He's now the chancellor. And he's in this town square setting, surrounded by citizens. He's standing next to what looks like a laser guillotine. It's like awesome, a, by the way. It's, awesome. It's like so a they, light like blade. Grim yeah, as fuck. Cool. Yeah, awesome. grim as fuck. That's cool. Grim as fuck. Like, I'm getting a lot of Les Miserab out of this as well. I don't yeah. know if you guys are picking True. up on that. I just got it right now. But, yeah, yeah. But there's I think little, I did read that somewhere. There's yeah, a little Les Mis in there, for sure. Um, and there's a there's an alien in the guillotine. His name is Biz Kova. And he's a he's an alien freedom fighter who helped the resistance carry out this mission yeah. into the concentration camps to liberate everybody. And then we meet this group of warlords, and this is good because it ties back to the TL to, to the Last Jedi when um when uh what's his face um who's the who's the uh Benicio del Toro's character what's his name again DJ oh, yeah yeah so it echoes back to DJ when he's on that ship and he's looking through the guys like his like data and he figures out that this guy's like a like a war profiteer he's like a weapons manufacturer and he's making weapons not only for the first order but he's also making weapons for the resistance right, right? 
And it kind of it kind of echoes back to this because the warlords are, ba- are are apparently the ones that have been underwriting the power base for the first order. So they're basically providing the financial backing to to do everything that they're doing, the concentration camps, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and they're displeased with the fact that the first order hasn't you know killed Ray and they haven't snuffed out the Jedi, the resistance, and they're basically demanding answers at this point. And mm-hmm. Hux is kind of pedaling on his on his heels. Um, and then they finally ask, where the fuck is Kylo Ren? Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, uh, by the way, before we, we jump to that, um, yeah. Hux actually is like really cool in this in this script. And it wasn't like at all thrown away. Like he's supreme he's he's a chancellor. Yeah. Chancellor Hux now. And he's like actually a character, you know what I mean? Like yeah. in the Rise of Skywalker, it was kind of they're just like, oh, it's a loose end. Let's get pride to kill. You know what I mean? Yep. So, guys, this this script has so much detail and so many layers and so much texture and so many notions and ideas that we really want to dive into. So, we want to give you guys the full experience. So, um, we're gonna we're gonna end this episode now, but we're gonna continue on talking about this script in a follow up episode. Yeah. So come back and make sure that you listen to the follow up episode. We're gonna we're gonna continue on. Uh, so we're going to sign off. Um, I'm Frank McGuire. Christina Dudemont. Chris Abana. And I'm Matt Fowler. Peace. Oh,